Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the beautiful Mont Blue Casino Resort and Spa here in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. We have a big night of action coming your way, a world championship twin bill brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions in association with Romanza, Mont Blue and Showtime. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this bout coming your way is sanctioned by the IBF. President Marion Muhammad, Supervisor Lindsey Tucker, the IBO President and Supervisor Ed Levine, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Introducing to you at this time are three judges scoring this bout from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Adelaide Bird. From Reno, Nevada, Bert Clements. And from Avon, Connecticut, Glenn Feldman. Introducing to you at this time, our third man to the ring, the referee in charge, working in this, his 28th world title bout, Tony Weeks. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF and IBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing leopard trimmed trunks and hailing from Takani, Johannesburg, South Africa. He weighed in at 117 and one half pounds with a record of 19 wins, one loss. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. In tonight's rematch, he is making his second attempt at a world title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the IBF number three ranked bantamweight contender, introducing Silence, the African Spice Mabusa. And his opponent across the ring is the defending world and a champion on my right. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with gold trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at the bantamweight limit of 118 pounds with a record of 35 wins and three losses. He has 31 big wins coming by way of knockout. In his three and a half year reign as champion, tonight he is making the seventh defense of his title. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the defending IBF and IBO bantamweight champion of the world, introducing Rafael Marquez. Once again, a referee in charge, Tony Weeks, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Mega. Okay, gentlemen, caballeros, you already received your instructions. Usted received your instructions. Right here is good, and that's gonna be low. Mira, aquí está bien, aquí no. Right here is good, and that's gonna be low. Aquí está bien, aquí no. I want a good, clean fight. Le quiero una play Olympia. Obey my commands at all times, above all, protect us at all times. Escucha me, cuídate, listo, ready, let's go. Vamos. Marquez very confident he will have his way again. Mabuza with other ideas. Is this in essence round five? Marquez sparkled in November. The more experienced champ can turn a fight with one punch. Terrific fight. We saw the, the right hand, we saw the compact left hook that dropped Mabuza. Lose his strength, the hand speed, and quickness, but uh, he made the mistake of being too much of a target in the first meeting. He can't stand in front of Marquez and mix it up. He's got to move around and show angles because Marquez just has extraordinary power in both hands for a battle. And the other problem for Mabuse is he just is a slow starter. Durant and uh, the people in his camp say he just doesn't get off to quick starts, so he's got to buy time in his first couple rounds any way he can. And yeah, Mabuza, he does have power, but not like Marquez, so he really shouldn't look to trade. Marquez started uncharacteristically fast in the original, very sharp and accurate. The feeling is, and uh, this is to your point, Al, Marquez uh, will start fast again. That's what the Mabuza camp feels, because the weight issue has been difficult for him for his last three fights. And that the notion is he doesn't want to go deep into the fight, which could be a big part of Mabuza's strategy to test Marquez's conditioning. <laughs> Rafi 
Rafael Marquez with the red gloves. Isn't just a puncher, he's a precision combination puncher. Those slashing punches exacerbated Mabuza's cuts in the first fight. No, they were banking in, uh, in Mabuza's uh, camp in R that Marquez will be a little over anxious in some of his attacks. Has not been here in round one. He's been very measured. Yeah, he's not starting quite as fast as uh, he did in the first fight. And of course, late in the first round, he had Mabuza on the canvas with that beautiful jab followed by the, the left hook. And a really disoriented silence, Mabuza. Nice right uppercut on the inside by uh, Marquez. You see the Marquez jab. One of the things that Nacho Beristain, who's just a wonderful trainer, has improved, uh, and Marquez himself has improved by working so hard, is the jab. He's become much better with that punch, and it allows him to do things he couldn't do earlier in his career when he was just a, a big puncher. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Almabuza is still standing in front of Marquez, like he did in the first fight. All he needs really is just a little bit. Yeah, and, uh, there's some lateral movement, but you see Marquez here in round one, still finding the range with his punches, and he's showing us, uh, there's that strong jab from Marquez. Oh, no, stop, 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 stop. Okay. 20 seconds left in the round, and a breakthrough for Marquez. Marquez rolling away at Mabuza, and Mabuza in some trouble early, but he is punching back. So you come and fight, my brother. Uh huh. Rinse, rinse, yeah. Give me that water. Pepper Mula. Baba, box. In and out, use the ring. Don't stand with him. Okay. Toward the end of that round, Marquez hurt him with a jab. We've just been talking about the jab, and that was so strong, it hurt Mabuza. Now, Marquez went in with some abandon, and Mabuza doing a lot of just clutching there to hang on. But Silence Mabuza landed a couple of good punches, including a really good left hook. That was a good short left That's hook that. followed by the right. Mabuza has very good hand speed, and it was evident there as he punched in desperation. Walks with him, man. He's, on, he's on. Come out smoking again. All of a sudden, a light went on, and both got into it towards the end of the, the first round. So things getting dramatic and exciting here early, just like in the first fight. Well, just when it looked like Mabuza was in dire straits, able to hold his own, he collected his thoughts, and then able to fire back and, and land effectively. Now, the difference in that round than some of the rounds we saw in the previous fight was Marquez had a really varied attack. Well, he threw a lot of left hooks. There were uppercuts, straight rights, the jabs. Right. Uh, it was a varied attack for him. Yeah, he was just coming at Mabuza from every angle like an octopus. Here's a more straightforward attack. Missing with the sweeping left hook there is Marquez. Mabuza now aiming for the, the belly. Mabuza's main hope in this fight is that right left hook to the body by Marquez is to really uh, use his hand speed and combination punches. So far, we have not seen as much of that as, uh, as he would like. Approaching midway round two, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship. Rafael Marquez in the black. Wearing the leopard is Mabuza. Blood coming from Mabuza's nose. So the first sign of blood here in this fight. Mabuza just can't resist languishing on the inside and you can tell he wants to oh. trade hooks with uh, Marquez Ball very long. South of the ball, and Mabuza stop, stop. will have five minutes for Tony Riggs if he demo. likes. The rule 
is if a fighter is hit below the belt and can't continue within five minutes, he loses. Nick Durant yelling from the corner, okay. silence, five minutes, telling him, take as long as you want. And it's the right way to do it. So, Al, you got any good recipes? <laughs> We could be here for a little bit as he uh, wa sits and relaxes with this. Well, you mentioned uh, Nick Durant reportedly right. under fire in his okay. native uh, South uh, Africa. The clear. feeling that if Pagusa loses, Stop. his reputation could plummet. He just, had a he's all right. yeah, he just had a tough loss with Cassius Beloy, who lost his title in a fight he was not expected to lose. And, um, Durant, of course, one of the best known trainers in South Africa. Well, not that much time taken. Yeah. After five minutes. So, uh, He's not allowed to gather for that hunt. So it's 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 just when I was getting thinking of a recipe, too. <laughs> Hold it. We may need it. <laughs> so round two continues. Babuza. Oh, he just takes a level there. A left hand by Marquez. Here's Marquez going to work. That jab set up that beautiful right hand. And it was a jab that set up the left hook that put Babuza down in the first fight. Very effective weapon for Marquez. There it is again. Shotgun type jab. Oh, good hand by Marquez. Marquez in command. And landed upstairs to Marquez's head. I'm mixed with you. Move now. We use these rounds. Runcer, Runcer. Runcer, Runcer. Left hook throw. Rafael Marquez strayed very low and uh, created a big issue for. Yeah, that was uh, very low, landing kind of in the thigh area. Uh, oh. More inside, and uh, 40 seconds taken by Mabuza. Later on, that jab and set up the right hand, and there had been a couple of good jabs before that from Marquez. Thunderous jabs, not just range finders, but punches that really hurt Mabuza. Hey, 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 Mike, the As Marquez the gets ready, Dr. Mike. David Zavala in the Mabuza corner examining the damage there. So it's round three. It has been a tough go so far for the challenger. Silence Mabuza getting a second crack at Marquez. Mabuza fought uh, four months ago. Marquez, uh, the last fight was back in November against uh, Mabuza. As Yogi Berra would say, it's deja vu all over again. Right? Because we're seeing a very similar pattern to the last fight. The only difference is Mabuza hasn't been knocked down. And it's a dilemma versus a guy like Marquez. If you move to your right to avoid Marquez's right hand, you're exposed to his left hook. If you move to your left to avoid his left hook, you're vulnerable to his right. So both are very effective. Do you want to repeat that for me? I have no idea what I just said. I'm going to send you a memo on that one. <laughs> the problem is that he's in trouble wherever he goes. That's what I meant. You know, and the issue for Mabuza really is, that, you know, Marquez is a long fighter. He gets that jab out there in the right hand. He can hit you at long range. And Marquez is very good on the inside as well. Now, there's where Mabuza is starting to move his hands. He needs to throw a lot of punches and throw them quickly. Tell you one thing about this kid, Mabuza, he is game. Yeah, very much so. Wow. Now, if he can get Marquez to, to lunge after him, to really attack more, there he can land counter punches like that jab Mabuza just landed. He's got to use that jab and that right more against uh, Marquez. You may have already mentioned that, talking about Mabuza. There's a nice right cross by Marquez to the head. Mabuza offering back, but Marquez able to uh, avoid a lot of those punches. Yep. Clip Marquez at the top of the head. You know what Mabuza is doing now? Fun round of boxing. See, there's the jab from Mabuza. When he throws combinations, he can get some work done in there. And remember, let's keep him tucked in our back of our head. Uh, Marquez is at trouble making the weight. He's moving up the next time out. They want to take this fight into the middle rounds. That may help them. Mabuza has the ability to switch the softball, but it's not recommended against the It's a close round. 
And there's uh, Mabuza bouncing around, showing lateral movement, which is to his advantage against Raphael. Marquez shooting that jab, and then a three-punch combination by Marquez. Mabuza missing with the, the left, digging into the body with the uppercut. And here's Mabuza applying pressure. work by Mabuza. That could pay dividends later. It was a terrific sequence by Mabuza. Good straight right yep. into the chest by Mabuza. That was a much better round for the South African. Keep fighting. How are you feeling? Is it? When Mabuza goes straight up the middle and throws combinations, he can get some things done against Marquez. And look, even though those first punches missed, he was able to get on the inside and land some good punches against Marquez. So Mabuza needs to throw more than one punch at a time. Watching uh, in the dressing room, a very concerned brother, Juan Manuel Marquez, who is uh, standing by for his fight later tonight. But uh, he finds it very difficult to watch his, his brother fight. But he is doing it right there. Here we go, round four. This is really developing into uh, an interesting fight. Nacho Beristain talking to uh, Marquez Beristain with a great history of being able to transform straight ahead brawlers into good technical fighters like he's done with uh, Rafael Marquez. You know in the seven and a half rounds that these two men have fought that last one by far the best for Silence Mabuza. Steve, you know, it's, not, it's not a good idea for him to trade hooks with him but when he throws them in combination Mabuza can get away with it and look at more movement from Silence Mabuza now. Not standing right in front of Marquez. So a sudden shift in this fight. Let's see if it continues. As we keep pointing out, uh, Mabuza's uh, team wants the silence to try to take this thing as deep as he can, at least into the middle rounds, to try to uh, wear Marquez out, because Marquez has been having trouble making the way. There's a nice right hand by Marquez. The uppercut missed. Back comes Mabuza. The hand speed of Mabuza is making the difference right now. The hand that uh, flurry was the most effective by Mabuza. That one uh, landed. Left uppercut raised. Just with the right. Mabuza scoring more now. His connect percentage is getting higher. And there's a right hand over the top by Mabuza. Followed by a left uppercut. Missing wildly with that looping left. And that could be dangerous. And Mabuza's jab has become much more of a factor in this match than these last couple of rounds. But Mabuza on the uh, balls of his feet, really bouncing around. Uh, Marquez more flat-footed, as you can see. Mabuza, one thing about him out, in excellent tip-top condition. And that's one thing that kept him going after that first round knockdown in the first fight. But you can see what superb shape he is in here. And Abandon the body attack, which will allow the Bruiser to stay pressure, continue this movement. That's a nice round for Silence and Bruiser. That's a great point, yeah. Things are starting to look a lot rosier for Bruiser here, suddenly, after a very difficult start. He still has blood all over his face from the nose, but it doesn't seem to be stopping him. He's tumbled by Marquez, but didn't have the kind of impact those punches were having earlier. There's a jab, beautiful jab by Marquez. Stop Mabuza in his tracks, he has to regroup. And then he comes forward once again. With the left, just with another left. And he grazed him with the right. Marquez with the right. says he did throw it the Hey, don't forget to catch this summer's hottest show, Brotherhood, Sundays at 10 p.m. If you missed any episodes, you can see it from the beginning with a special marathon, August 19th, starting at 8 p.m. I can't wait for that. Uh, revisit some episodes, my brother. It's a good series. Very appropriate, given tonight's theme. Yeah, that's for sure. 
Silence Mabuza in round four showed us what can happen when you throw combinations and you're accurate with your punches. Getting Marquez against the ropes, not everything landing, but he landed a significant amount of punches during that last round, and that was, I said the third was his best round, the fourth was his best so far. I'll do that for you, boss. Gunza, stick to the plan, in and fucking out. Durant, veteran trainer who's coached 58 South African champions, 15 world champions. He says Mabuza may be the best of all of his uh, South African champions. He is a straight talking, no nonsense guy. Now, Nick Durant suggested, you may have heard it, stick to the plan, he said to Mabuza. And that's important because the danger for Silence Mabuza is that he could get lured into a slugging match with Marquez because he's doing so well. He's still got to hit, 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 move away, come back, flurry a little, and then get out. Letting his fists fly. This is not the same Rafael Marquez we saw in the first fight. Well, he was for all rounds and three quarters. Now we look at press row Tom Gardner from the uh, Associated Press, Mike House of the Nevada Appeal, Mario Serrano, Premier Round Magazine. So after four rounds, they've got it as a majority draw. I have the so far. It's that close. Look at Marquez digging that left hook downstairs. Getting back to that body work a little more. Marquez was more aggressive in the first fight, as you point out. I think the word you used was measured early on. More measured in this fight so far. But he can be explosive and he uh, can turn a fight with one punch. We know that about him for sure. Yeah, that's the caution that we want to give to everybody because there's no question Marquez can hurt you with a punch and absolutely change things. <laughs> Good news is I don't think the heat is a big factor here right now. It, it was stifling uh, about an hour ago, but it has uh, pulled off just a bit, low 70s, and it's uh, fairly comfortable. Steve, do you get the same feeling I do that Marquez is almost being economical because you feel like maybe he's not sure he can throw a lot of punches every round and still be effective in later rounds? You know, do, it yeah. feels that way. That, and that's where the difference lies as opposed to the first one. To the forehead by Mabuza, and that got Marquez's attention. Again on the defensive as Mabuza swings for the fences. And those are good, solid right hands, Mabuza. Look at the move of the silence, Mabuza. This is all Mabuza now, very confident. This is the first round and performing valiantly here. As it goes to the corner. Our translator, Felix De Jesus. You gotta throw the jab. You gotta throw the jab. Water, water. No. How are you feeling? I'm feeling tired. No, no, no. Thank you. You feeling good? Yeah. You gotta keep your hands up. You gotta keep your hands up. Yeah. The first change at the end of the round and one that uh, while Marquez landed some punches. That was a great uppercut on the inside, but it didn't deter Mabuza. And Mabuza was able to wail away and land a very good right hand right at the end of the sequence. There's the right that pushed Marquez back. The hand speed of Mabuza really is the headline in this uh, in this fight. It was starting to be just a little toward the end of their first fight. Well, at his best, Mabuza is the complete package, and we're starting to see that here. Lightning fast hand speed, as Al points out, throughout. Those fast combinations to the body. He's got heart, a good chin. And he's got power. He doesn't have the kind of power that Marquez has, but he does have decent power. He just made the questionable decisions in the first fight. I think this thing is a combination of 
Caboose are fighting a smarter fight as opposed to the first fight, and Marquez just not being the same kind of Marquez we saw in the first fight. Uh, I agree. It's, it's equal parts both those things, and what it's all adding up to is for Silence Mabuza, uh, a pretty good effort right now. Now for Marquez, what does he need to do to get back into winning these rounds? Use the jab, it was a very effective weapon. He was hurting him with it, and get back to throwing the hook. Uh, he's not throwing that much. It was tremendously effective in the first fight, and he's not throwing it enough uh, in this match. By the way, if it's not obvious enough that we are outdoors, that noise you may be hearing in the background is the wind whipping around and uh, affecting our microphone. The wind from the west at 16 miles per hour. Delightful. It really is what it's turned into. Great setting out here. And a good crowd on hand. Over 3,000. And an arena that seats close to four. And it is just a, uh, an incredible setting. Whenever Mabuza throws more than one punch at a time, it freezes Marquez. There's a low blow by Mabuza. And now Marquez will have five minutes to recover. So there we go. Time in. Well, he'll be on about five seconds. <laughs> it wasn't as drastic as the one uh, that was offered up earlier against Mabuza. Mabuza is a personal trainer. He teaches box exercise. And you know, uh, some of his clients are looking at this uh, rooting line. Oh, yeah. There's a left uppercut by Marquez. He's landed that punch a lot, but has been countered with the right hand by Mabuza over it. So he has to be careful about using that too much. There it is again by Marquez, and he missed it. He's enamored with that punch, and that's a dangerous punch right now. Marquez going to the body there. Mabuza is still on the move. Marquez more stationary. Oh, nice uh, left hand there by Marquez. That was Marquez countering, and he's not by nature a counterpuncher. Well, that's more like his brother. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you later. Well, 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 a great counterpuncher. But Mabuza has some luck of the chip. Well, the difference is Mabuza backed him up after he got in. good chip. I think that has to be playing a little trick on the line of Marquez. But please, with respect, I've got to get into the ring. The cameraman can't take over my job, please. Cameraman, Win Tatcha. The fight is the most important thing here. You seen the cameraman? Yeah, he's in my way, man. It's beautiful, Simon. It's beautiful. Here is where the left hand strayed low for Mabuza. And uh, Marquez took only a short time to recover. This was a terrific exchange toward the end of the round. Those left uppercuts by Marquez, very effective, but you see Mabuza coming back and landing that short chopping left to the chin of Marquez. And at the end of the round, another good exchange by both men. The difference is when Marquez backs him up this time around, Mabuza shot, comes back with his own shots and his own good combinations. What a, what a great fight this is turning into. Terrific sustained uh, two-way action. And now we can hear how intense things are getting in the corner with Nick Durant, who was uh, barking out instructions to the, to the marshal in the corner about uh, the cameraman. He's just trying to do his job there with Mabuza. And it's getting very hot. And I don't mean temperature. Yeah, Nick Durant a little concerned about uh, being proud of him. Nice right hand by Rafael Marquez. And we're heading into that part of the fight. You know, we're at the halfway mark of it, where we have to start paying attention to, to, to how these fighters are doing in terms of stamina. Um, and also, um, and I've got the fight even, by the way, dead even. Uh, but we're, we have to look at Marquez and say, OK, we know it's hard to make the weight. We know the next fight is moving up in weight. Are the Mabuza people right that the longer this fight goes, the more to help their man? This was the game plan going in as you check out press row. It's still a majority draw. Tom Gardner from the AP, Mike Hauser of Nevada Appeal, Mario Serrano from Premier Round Magazine. And my score, as I suggested, 57-57. I have it a draw. The Mabuza jab has 
been much improved in this fight. And that's a big part of the reason to get off some of those combinations. Remember, this is a rematch of a fight that ended in the fourth round last November. Mabuza having the fight end on cuts. And it was really the TKO. Mabuza's first loss. So here he is again. About nine months later, looking for revenge. And he is Looking to change the course of the fight is Marquette. And in terms of motivation, the Booza feels they feel very much that the uh, cut was caused by a clash of heads, inappropriate stoppage. And as you said, he turned out a shot at the WBA call just to get back to this fight. So this is a motivated fight. He wants to beat very badly. He's shown how bad he's so far in this fight. But this has been a good round for Marquette. Uh, the passed up the title fight, passed up a lot of money, took the circuitous route to get back here to fight Marquez again. That's how, how much of an insatiable appetite he had to get this fight again. And uh, he's not letting people out. Now in this round, Gomez is moving a lot. He has not landed a lot of punches. And uh, this is a round he might be giving away to Rafael Marquez. He could regret that one. forecast possible isolated thunderstorms. Give me some water. You gotta throw, you gotta throw. You're throwing, but you can't leave them down. After the combination, immediately, your jab. Give him water to drink. Good. So, mm -hmm. Keep on jabbing, keep on jabbing. Come, up, come through with uppercut left hook. Side side, uppercut left hook, side side. Okay? Give him the Marcus, give him the So, an appreciative crowd of 3,200 on hand as we enter into round eight schedule for 12 for the IBF Bantamweight Championship here in. Beautiful Lake Tahoe, Nevada. You know, it's important to have a focus corner. Nick Durant has provided that for Mabuza. Not getting overly excited about the power, and reminding him again there, uh, the side-to-side -side movement's important, and then suggesting an uppercut and a hook. Um, those dangerous punches from the club, he's getting away with them. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, Durant a little bit uh, under pressure from the South African uh, press for the uh, cash didn't offer the right technical instructions between rounds. Superloy, who won the title and two months later, lost to a nondescript guy. And so they're really uh, a little bit down on Durant. So if he can pull this one out, so there's a lot of emotion going on here with Mabuza and Durant. Mabuza wants this, uh, and Durant really wants it too for uh, other reasons outside of just uh, winning the championship, just to get his respect back from everybody. Mabuza is. Off to a very good start here in round eight after Marquez, I thought, had a good round seven. It's the combination Against Ricardo Vargas in his last fight, there was a cut over the right eye for Mabuza. So 
this is continue to be an issue for him. Well, this one is over the left eye, right on the cheekbone. So it's blood's not getting into the eye, unless, of course, a, a, a Marquez punch rubs it up into the eye. You know, here's where the skill level of Rafael Marquez, which is much better than it was in the early days, uh, stands in a good stead. He's in a fight that he may not score now, but he only uses every tool available to him to box very expertly, and especially in this round. He's having a great round against Mabuza. And Mabuza, as you can see, being a little more cautious here, understandably. Final seconds of round eight, and the tide is beginning to turn around here for Marquez. There's a couple Stop. Yeah, come on, stop. Huh? Eat in, Roger.